as a quick precursor to this episode, I would love to invite you to attend the autumn edition of my in-person event, Dare Greatly in the Coaching Arena, which will be held on Friday the 8th of November in Barnes, Southwest London. It's five minute walk from Barnes Station and there's also a free car parking place on site. So it's the best of both worlds. We will be preparing and planning for your best ever 2025 and you will leave with that vision and strategy for your next 12 months with a newfound sense of connection and focus. We will be harvesting your presence and planting the seeds for a profitable and joyful 2025, allowing your business goals to bloom with ease. I'm very excited to be bringing the warmth of the season and all of those beautiful colors and everything we can learn from shedding what no longer serves us and preparing for spring. Embrace the seasons of change and join me on 8th of November to dare greatly in the coaching arena. Do not worry if you don't know anyone, I will ensure that you feel welcome from the moment you arrive until the moment you leave. I cannot wait to see you there and grab the link now in the show notes. Hello and welcome to Women in the Coaching Arena podcast. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Jo Lott, a business mentor and ICF accredited coach, and I help coaches to build brilliant businesses. I know that when you prepare to enter the arena, there is fear, self-doubt, comparison, anxiety, uncertainty. You can tend to armor up and protect yourself from vulnerability. In this podcast, I'll be sharing honest, not hype, practical and emotional tools to support you to make the difference that you're here for. Dare greatly, you belong in this arena. Welcome to Women in the Coaching Arena. I am so glad you are here. Today, I'm really excited to have Jess here. Jess messaged me saying that she is intending to join the business of coaching after she's finished her ILM Level 7 in Executive Coaching. And would I like to share the perspective of someone who is considering making that investment? And I know that so many of you are in that place where You've just invested a lot of money in your coach training and you're wondering whether to do this alone or whether to get help in that next step. So super excited to chat with Jess today and hear her thoughts. I'm as interested as you are in what she needs help in, why she's looking to invest in the business side of things, as well as obviously investing in the coaching side of things, which she has done. So cannot wait to chat. Please do share with us a bit about your journey in coaching so far. Hi, Jo. Thank you for having me on the podcast. So most of my career had been in digital content. When I was 39, I had some coaching through my work. And as part of that, my coach said to me, I think you'd make a good coach. And it completely took me by the thread because I don't think it ever would have crossed my mind to even consider that as a career path because she hadn't said that. So that sowed the seed for me and I just found that coaching would be an amazing fit for me and I took the plunge and signed up to do my ILM level seven senior and executive coaching diploma. I'm coming to the end of that now and I'm starting to think about the business side of things which led me to send you that email. So excited to learn more. And I did the ILM level seven in executive coaching too. So share your experience of that qualification so far. I mean, it sounds a bit cliche, doesn't it? But it genuinely has been life changing for me. I don't think I've ever worked as hard at anything in my life other than raising two children. It's been very demanding, very challenging, but honestly, one of the best things I've ever done. I trained with in the company, a shout out to them there. I really can recommend them more highly. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's such a personal growth journey training as a coach, isn't it? Let alone the skills that you can use on others. So totally, I hear you. And as someone now on the cusp of being qualified, what are your biggest concerns when it comes to starting and growing your coaching business? That's a very good question because I think probably anyone starting out on setting up their own business, whatever field it's in, has about a billion concerns. For me, it getting those clients in. You do your course, you do your practice hours. And of course, it's much easier to get free clients than it is paid clients. For me, it's what I need to do to 
create that steady pipeline because it's just so different to being in an employed role. If you've not done that before, it's just a whole different mindset you need to be in. So it's the getting the consistent pipeline of clients. It's also for me, because I'm, I'm pretty early on in my journey, I haven't defined my package as such. So at the moment I'm selling six coaching sessions, but I know that the messaging around that can be a lot more compelling about what people can get out of it, but it's the messaging as well, I think, and how you position yourself. And there's just so much to it, isn't there? When you're new to it, it can feel quite overwhelming. Yeah, totally. And it's not just even the basics anymore. It's just like coaching. How can you continue to get better and better and better skill? So yes, very excited you're considering it, especially so early in your journey, because I think most people struggle for a good year to two years sometimes before getting the help that they need. So what has led you to considering working with a business coach at this stage in your journey? So the reason for me is the business and the marketing and the sales and all of that stuff. And I'm a very impatient person as well. So I didn't want to wait around. I wanted to hit the ground running and I'm trying a few things out myself now. I'm seeing what works well and what doesn't. I've started to experiment. I'm doing a special offer at the moment. And it's actually quite fun experimenting with things, but I think I definitely benefit from the experience of someone who's been there and done that. And yeah, that's what led me to you and your program. Yeah, totally love it. And the hidden benefit of doing something when you are feeling excited and motivated is that you haven't lost that confidence that often people have lost by the time they've been kind of going around on their own without support and then it takes quite a long time to build people up again. How did you find me and the business of coaching and what attracted you to the program? I'm a massive podcast fan and I was searching for coaching podcasts to add to my collection. Yours came up and it was a bit different to the other ones I'd listened to. What I really like about your approach is that you're very authentic, although that's quite an overused word these days. You are very authentic and believe what you say you know you get a lot of those make six figures in three months and that kind of thing and so going back to talking about the messaging the, the messaging you put in your LinkedIn post on your podcast it's almost like I've said it myself if that makes sense and I, I work really well in that sort of environment I oh, love it yeah I assumed you found me on LinkedIn so great to know that people actually do just search for coaching in podcasts and find the podcast and You touched on it there, but why me and not another business coach? Yeah, it definitely, for me, comes back to that authenticity piece and the trust that comes along with that. So I, it's weird, isn't it? So I almost feel like I know you a little bit in like the least stalkerish way possible. You're also very honest about the fact that you do need to put work into this. You need to be ready to go all in. And I think probably six months ago, I wouldn't have been ready to do that. But I think I'm coming to the point now where I'm like, this is definitely the right time. And you've also published some great case studies as well, which are all obviously always so good to read, aren't they? They really paint a picture of what it's like to work with someone. So yeah, I think those are really useful as well. Yeah, fabulous. That's great to hear. And in say the next one to two years, what would be your ultimate dream for your coaching business? For me, it's getting qualified. That that needs to come first. Um one of my my core values is integrity. So for me, it was so important to do a really challenging, and robust qualification just to make sure that I felt I would be giving best possible coaching to someone. So definitely finishing qualification. In terms of the business, I've started to niche down. I feel very passionate about my niche, my, my sort of 40-year-old mid-career. I just know that they're my people. I know you said before, your niche should be something that you can talk about all day long without getting bored. And that is absolutely it for me. I think it's very easy for people to fall into something. You know, you start your career around 20. You don't really know yourself that well then. And you can often just sort of think, walk through it. So I think 40 is that pivotal time in your life where it's just so valuable to pause and figure out what you need from the next 20 years of your career to be happy and fulfilled. Because... It sounds a bit like a cliche, but you only get one life. So let's not waste it doing something we're not passionate about. So over the next couple of years, I think I'm going to grow my business best I can. So 
with a bit of help from you for sure and work on that client pipeline and putting myself out there like it's not in my comfort zone to um, be a guest on the podcast for example and talk about myself but we have to do these things like we have to push ourselves out of our comfort zones and be a bit more visible and yeah hopefully it'll have some, some good rewards yeah totally love it and especially the 40 year old thing like honestly my life genuinely began at 40. Did you have any hesitations about investing in the program or a business coach? I think it's always easy to not spend the money, especially when you're starting out because you don't have a robust pipeline of clients. You're not bringing in thousands of pounds every month. I think it would be very easy to not think that the investment's worth it. For me, I think also because I am quite impatient. I want to see the results as quickly as I can. And I think this is quite a recent thing for me, but I, I don't mind asking for help now. Like I definitely did in the past, but I think probably through this coaching journey, I've realized that there's no shame in it. We can't do everything ourselves. Just spend the money where it's going to benefit you the most. And I really think it's going to be an investment that pays off. Yeah, I love that. And my own money mindset has massively shifted from when I started on this coaching journey. Even, for example, instead of just paying the money for my ILM Level 7, I actually worked doing admin work for an entire year to pay for that training. Whereas now I'm like, what was I thinking working every night of my life with a one and a three-year-old and three other jobs rather than just hand over the £4,000 or whatever it was? So I really hear you on that money mindset thing and how it does grow in your coaching training and on the journey yeah absolutely and it's it's crazy isn't it so often you look back and you're like why should I do that but if you can learn from that and do things differently then yeah that's a good way to feel yeah totally so anything else you are hoping to gain from the program I think another thing actually is that it can be very lonely when you're setting up your own business so whether you're still in an employed role or you're sitting out on your own and you know you don't have a team around you. I think either way, it can be very lonely. I'm an introvert and I'm very happy in my own company a lot of the time. But I know I need some for connection, teamwork, feeling like belonging to something as well. So I think that will be another bonus of your program, meeting like-minded people yeah totally I really do see it like coach training and I think often like I really bonded with my coach training people like you have with yours but then sadly it kind of drifts away when you leave that space and it's so sad because maybe some people are using it in their organization or they might not all be setting up coaching businesses so it's so exciting that you're going to maintain those relationships but also gain other relationships with people using those skills in the way that you're hoping to use them as well. Yeah, absolutely. And anything else we haven't covered, Jess, that you wanted to share? I think we've probably touched on it, but it's interesting being at this point, like I haven't signed up to your program yet, but I am planning to, and it's, it's quite an interesting sort of moment of decision or indecision, like, should I go for it? You know, like I said, it's very easy to not shell out another few grand for another course but I'm confident I will see that return on investment and I think I'll see it again and again and I think just have a bit of fun along the way as well you know like I said that connection with people not only will it produce results I'm confident I'm actually really going to enjoy it as well. Totally and actually I've got an in-person event this Friday and this morning I've been planning that and I've been looking into the hormones and at the top of the hormone cycle we have oxytocin, which is the love hormone, the connection, the happiness, the joy. And if you can get enough of that, you won't keep going to the cortisol. And obviously from but either of those places comes the action you take and the results that you get. So I think the more we can get that oxytocin, the more it kills off the cortisol stress hormone and the more we'll take bigger action and get better results. So love that. Where can people find you, Jess? My business is 2020 Coaching. Like you've done 20 years of your career. What do you want to do with the next 20 years? So you can find me at www.2020coaching or spelled out in words, not numbers, and one word, .co.uk. I'd love to connect with you on LinkedIn as well. I am Jess Spires. You can search for me and you'll find me there. And yeah, coaches, we know that it's a big commitment to sign up 
to coaching with someone. So what I offer is a 30 minute call initially. We'll see if we're a good fit. You can find all my contact details on my website. Yes, fabulous. And I will also link to them in the show notes as well, Jess. And I love the title of your business. It's so true, isn't it? That you honestly at 40, you kind of feel like, well, I've just done so many years. I must be nearly done. And then you realize you've got the same amount of time still to go. Thank you so much, Jess, for your time and for sharing with people. I know it's such a monumental moment when you're on that cusp. And every time I invest in a program or a coach, I feel that same resistance of like, do I need this? I should be able to do this on my own. So thank you, Jess. And I cannot wait to work with you. Thanks so much, Joe. I hope you enjoyed listening to mine and Jess's conversation. I was as interested to hear her responses as hopefully you were. I know that so much resistance can come up when investing. So there are five tips that I would suggest you ask yourself when thinking about any big investment or decision of any sort. The first is, can saying yes to this opportunity get me closer and faster to my goal? The second is, if I could make my financial investment back by two to four times over my lifetime, would it be a smart investment? What about 10x of the investment? The third point is consider the alternative. What happens if I don't say yes? Will I be in the exact same situation in one year, in five years? Will you complain in one year? Would you kick yourself? Fourth is consult your intuition. The fears are going to be loud when making any investment. I hear them loudly and clearly myself. If I could silence my fear just for a moment, what does my gut tell me about what to do? If fear weren't real, what would you do? And my final point, which I talk about at the end of every episode, is to trust yourself. So faith versus fear. If I come from a place of faith rather than fear, would I say yes to what this opportunity is? Let your faith be bigger than your fear. So I hope those steps help you in your decision making. I have been considering a big decision myself and using these five steps to make a decision. So I really hope they help you today. If you want to get my personal support, then now is the time to do that. You will find details of the Business of Coaching program and how to work with me in the show notes. So like I say at the end of every episode, trust yourself, believe in yourself and be the wise gardener who keeps on watering the seed. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Women in the Coaching Arena. I have a mass of free resources on my website, joannalotcoaching.com. That's Joanna with an A and Lot with two Ts, joannalotcoaching.com. And I'll also put links in the show notes below. Let me know if you found this episode useful, share it with a friend and leave me a review and I will personally thank you for that. Remember to trust yourself, believe in yourself and be the wise gardener who keeps on watering the seed. Get into the arena, dare greatly and try.